Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, so we're going to do a little power test now on this here uh, amplifier. This is the one that um, I got from eBay. It claims to be 180 watts uh, plus 180 watts, so 180 watts per channel. Talking to the person who sold it to me, uh, they say that's peak and it's good for 20 watts RMS per channel. Okay, well, we've already looked at the data sheet and we've seen that the data sheet doesn't say it's good for um, 20 RMS. What the data sheet says here, we can look at it again, is it's good for two times eight watt on the output. All right, so let's get back to this. Um, so I've decided because the actual chip itself, the TDA, chip will take maximum of 18 volts and we can put in 15 volts into the op amp that's in there so I'm going along with 15 volts I've switched it on so it starts warming up and we're going through this little setup because these are different this is a bridge tied load which means you need differential probes for this and on my oscilloscope here which has been and my oscilloscope here which has uh, been camouflaged by this pack of absolutely delicious mince pies it's because of the reflection, it was, it was doing my head in off the screen. But on my oscilloscope, it's all like a single-ended. And so I couldn't do the tests with that scope. But with this little beauty, um, I can. I can take out the BNC connectors and I can use uh, directly connected here at the differential inputs. Which means that I can measure stuff like this, which is pretty cool. Uh, so how we've got that set up then is uh, the orange. And the blue on here are the two positives of the oscilloscope. And then if you've got an orange with a white stripe and a blue with a white stripe, and they're the negatives. So they're connected into this and onto the speaker outputs. And there's also another connection on the speaker output that comes out and goes around here. And this is for the dummy load. Same thing on this side for the dummy load. Now we've got these yellow connections as well. You've got a yellow and... Um, this is for the um, we've got one yellow and one yellow stripe. So this is the waveform generator, channel one, channel two. And then we've got a common ground, which we're bringing in to this. We can't use the grounds from the speakers because this is where differential and open-ended um, become uh, different. This ground here is to ensure that I've got a ground in relation to the device. And these ones here are not actually grounds in relation to the device. That's why it's a different setup when you're doing these things. So we've got the one ground, it's connected to the grounds here, I've just tied them together. And then we've got these two going onto these little mini grippers here, which are for the waveforms, one and two. Okay, and this device then just does the rest for you, which is fantastic. Yeah, can't really uh, ask for any more than that. So what I'm gonna do now is on the oscilloscope side of things, we're gonna come over to the screen here is I'm gonna set everything running. I'm gonna set my two waveform generators. Now I've already got them put in there at 1.4 volts on both sides of amplitude. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we can adjust this. I can either adjust it by its the state that it's got here, which is just a preset for me, or I can do it by just clicking in there and typing in whatever value I choose. Uh, this is the waveform on both of them. You can see it says disabled at the moment because we've not set them off running. If I just move that out of the way for a second, or we'll just put that just on the edge there so we get to see everything. We get to see our different waveforms down here, but that's different. We're not messing around with this at the moment like that. But we've got a one kilohertz signal going to be going in, and that's exactly the same on the pair of them. And we are now going to set it as to run all. And as you can see, it says here that it's running. Now on the oscilloscope side of things, we're just going to run that. And we are going to see that we've got both traces up there and not a lot is really happening. And the reason why not a lot's happening is because the volume is turned all the way down um, on the actual amplifier. Uh, and you can see here where it's uh, millivolts. Uh, this is the AC RMS that we're going to be looking towards to do our quick calculations on how much wattage this is putting out before clipping. And down the bottom here, we've got our FFT. Uh, which is set up between 10 hertz and 20 kilohertz. We should actually back that off to 20 kilohertz. So I'm just going to type that in as being 20 kilohertz because it does say 
on the um, on the instruction manual which unfortunately my cat was up here the other day and fortunately he didn't yak up be sick across this but he did do it on the instructions for one new piece of kit that I got that I'll show you maybe at another stage um, you might be able to see it just here and he did uh, yeah he was sick all over the other thing so they got thrown um, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start turning up the volume on this thing and seeing what it looks like as it's coming through on the, um, on, the, on, the, on, the sc on the screen over here. So here I go, I'm slowly turning it up, slowly turning it up and we'll see already that if you look at the FFT, when, I'm, when it's down here you can see that there's some noise down the bottom. I'm, I've got all this set up really for how it's going to look. That's on the FFT, you can see where it's clipping. You can see over there on the power supply and which power it's using. If I were just to back that off until the FFT stops looking so noisy, we can see that that is about what you're going to get on your full power. Now I'm just going to let this just warm up slightly more just to give it a half a house chance. If I just feel on top of here, it's cold. That's good, but it will get a lot warmer. Um, as it's running. So, I'm just gonna just see if we can just bring this into a little bit more. If we do a hamming for this, it just gives it more of a straight line on the FFT that you can see there, so it might be easier for you to see when this starts distorting. I'm just gonna push it into distortion now, just so you can see. And part of the distortion is when you see that these are starting to square up, okay? And as you'll see, there, they're square on the top of it. And I just push it right to the to the to its fullest uh, extent on the volume. You see how they're very squared off. So I'm gonna back that off now because we don't want that squaring up. And you'll see the FFT as it gets noisy. Look, we just back that off now until it's nice and clean. Now we can near enough take. We can near enough take now our. Um, our measurements and we're going to see here on the measurements for the ACRMS on both channels channel 1 and channel 2 there's a slight deviation between the two channels and that can be seen anyway you see channel 2 slightly higher um, and just very slightly lower but more so higher than uh, channel 2 there and so you can see it reflected here that uh, the um, channel 2 has a output of 6.021 and the number just keeps moving uh, volts we may as well just say six volts there and it's the top one is 5.73 so we may as well just say 5.7 there or well, we could always round up if it makes anybody feel happier but just while it's warming let me just change and we're going to go straight from zero I'm just going to check that is the base yeah straight from zero on the base and we're just going to slowly turn that up I'm just a little tiny bit turned up and you can see it's clipping already. I just want you to see what that amplitude does. And it stays up there and it's got its clipping. Uh, but you can see on the FFT, look, as I just move that all the way to the right and then I start backing it off, backing it off, backing it off. You can see that that just changes on the FFT just a little bit. As I back it all the way down, all the way off the base, you can see the FFT cleans up. I'm going to do the same thing on the treble. It's all the way to the left at the moment. So I'm going to start very slowly, just turning it to the right. We're probably about halfway there now. And as you can see, the uh, amplitude goes up and we're going into clipping anyway. And you can see it on the FFT. You can also see on the power over there now, it's using 1.7 amps. If I just back that to 1.7, 25.5 watts. And it says on our... Uh, Outputs there on the C1 and C2, the ACRMS for both is 7.5 volts and 7.6 volts. But we are, you know, we're into a lot of distortion. That's probably that 10%. Um, and if I just back that down, just get it to where we're not quite clipping. There we go. It's on the FFT, I could back that off slightly more, but I'm just going to let it just go a little tiny bit. There we go, just, just snugging it. Uh, we've got uh, 5.9 and 6 volts. We'll just call that 5.9 and 6. We'll check the, the highest number and we'll just call it um, 6 volts. If I can get it any higher, 
without it distorting uh, on the volume I will just to try and snug that little extra bit out but as you can see the FFT is, uh, is a little bit noisy there so let's have a look in actual fact it looks like it's slightly under that so we're going to get the 5.9 and the 6 volts okay that's what we're going to use for our measurements let me just quickly bring up the calculator a nice easy one there so we go 5.9 or 6 volts so let's just choose the 6 volts yep 6 square rooted and then divided by our 8 ohms which is uh, what our dummy loads are and we got 4.5 uh, 4.5 watts RMS output. It's not even close. Not even close really to what it's supposed to be able to do. Um, but this is what we got. And that's not saying that the chip's bad or that the data sheet's bad for the chip that's in here for the TDA 7570. Um, that's all that's saying is that this, the setup isn't, you know, as good is what it could be. Uh, doing what we're doing here, the way it's set up here, well, that's fine. That's, that's fine. It could be better, of course, um, but it's fine. We'd, it gives us the ballpark, the pretty much area of where we are. Um, but the way that this is laid out inside could probably be done better. And I don't think that the particular op amp in here, it's not going to be genuine. Uh, I can't remember what it is, 4558, I believe. Let me just have a quick little check over here. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a 4558 here. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be a genuine one. And even if it is, yeah, it's just not, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's just not a very good amp system. What's the temperature like? It's warm, it's nice. I mean, it's not a radiator warm or anything like that. And it is probably only the 25, maybe 26. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty good. I'm not going to bother chucking the meter on because I don't have one here and the video is getting too long anyway. But there you go guys, I'll just to give you a, an idea of what the output is really like on that. Um, there we have it. It's, they say the numbers don't lie. And, uh, and I don't believe they do. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.